Well, okay. Five S. Five S T A. There goes my baby. <laughs> what's up, my G? Yeah. What's up, Ash? How you doing? What's good, Z? We see, we say what's up to Mari. Say what up, Mari. What's up, what's up? what up? What up? What up? What up? My baby said birthday in one hour. Oh, happy birthday! In the mountains. About to get turned up. Look like you're in the wilderness. All right, so I don't want to take a live book too long, but let's go, my nigga. Let's go. Let's get right. What? Back. What the? The fuck happened? I mean, be wait, turn that down. You can turn it off. Um, you have to be more specific. All right, so look, I, I watched the interview. We did an interview two days prior. Right, right. We're, we do the interview on what was it? Tuesday, Wednesday? I don't even remember. It was Tuesday. It was maybe two days before the Nori. Yeah. Then you get. I, I'm over here like, damn, I ain't give him enough to drink. Man, you know what? Um, the Nori thing was already planned. Like, I I even posted, I posted a text. I, I hit him. I was like, bro, we going shot for shot. Because, you know, people people know me and Nori's, like, we we brothers off camera. Yeah. So, so you know, we used to live with each other, like, like in the same complex in Miami. And, and you know, it was like, it was like, um... We got close. So, you know, we done got fucked up together. One time, I remember, you know what I'm saying? I, there was a wheelchair, man. Like, you know, Nori, drink, Nori drinks. I'm not a drinker. But, like, I knew I knew for that particular interview, I wanted to get real drunk. I want to, you know, because I've done it three, four times with them. And I'm like, damn, I want to do something different. You know what I'm saying? And I want to, um, I know how liquor do to me. Anybody knows me, I say, liquor makes me emotional. And, and like for sure, it's five stars with a capital S. Hold on one second. Let me get someone with the Wi-Fi yeah. out here. The number five, the capital S, and then stars, and then capital P for please. Five stars, please, with S and P. Okay. All right. So, um, like, I I, I knew, because there was I had a lot on my mind, you know, going through this Eminem stuff. And um, people don't realize, like, you know what I'm saying? Like when you when 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 you come up a certain way, you 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 go through and you see a lot. So I don't deny that there's probably stuff inside of me as far as you know, um, you know that I probably take for granted because I never I just lived with it all my life. Like growing up, seeing death and destruction all the time. You know, you it, it, you maybe you take it for granted because you live with it and it was the norm back then. But maybe. You know what I'm saying? I have a lot of stuff built up in me. And I found out that by letting it out, no matter where you're at under any circumstance, it's healthy to do that. Now, the Nori situation, I went in there telling him, we're gonna go shot for shot. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get loose. Because I, you know, I know when you get drunk, I know how I am. I get emotional and then sometimes belligerent. That's why I don't drink. But I know if I went and got really toasty, I would get open on some of these subjects. A lot of times. I do interviews and I'm real kind of like politically correct because it's like I'm trying to be the good guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to like, yeah, I'm trying to answer everything right and be and be right and everything politically right. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, um, you know, that's, that's not even how I came up. Yeah. I was in the streets. I wasn't politically right. I just was what I felt was right and was on my mind and my heart. So I felt like, you know what, let me... I want to see what this shit's gonna turn out to be, and because yeah. early, you see, I, I started drinking early. Yeah, I wanted to get toasty early. I didn't want to like gradually get drunk as the. I want to just get fucked up from the start, and then everything I said was true. I was, I went belligerent with it on a few subjects, and even like with a few people as far as the shit I said. You know what I'm saying? Um, and and it's not like as an excuse I was drunk, but I was drunk. And and but but everything I said, I knew what I was saying. I wasn't that drunk, you know. I yeah. wasn't I wasn't pissy drunk, throwing up drunk, you know what I'm saying. I just got emotionally drunk that night, and I had I had my moment. I had my moment in front of the world, you know. You know, uh, one thing I could say about you that I genuinely feel is you've always been honest, and the reason I fuck with you is because you've always been honest. You know, people have their opinions on certain shit. And people always want to knock somebody down and say, well, this person is this or this person is that based on what they see on Shade Room, Baller Alert, you know what I mean? The, the clickbait shit that they see. Um, but I, I 
I've never had uh, interaction with you where it wasn't just pure honesty, you know, real shit. You know, that's a, that's a minute speck of how many people are out here in this world of, of those people. Like, that's a speck. And if it's that small, Oh, then it's like you're doing good. That's all it is. <laughs> then you do, because the love is out here. See, the love is outside. The love is, the internet shit never, ever bothers me. At the, at the beginning, it may have, because I was feeling it out. And when you grow up a certain way, when it comes to respect and disrespect, the internet changes. There's no rules. So, you know, you have to adjust yourself to that. But the people that say shit or have opinions or whatever, they, that's a speck of what is out here in the world. And um, I like those odds, you know what I'm saying? Because when I'm outside, it's 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 super genuine love, and I and I get mobbed by you know people to take pictures, and it's 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 crazy love. The internet is the internet, and the, you know so when you can, when, how you win on the internet is you really don't like you really have to have your mindset that it that them people don't even exist. They have no bearing on who I am. They have, they don't, they don't even glitch, not even a small glitch in my matrix. And they don't even, they don't even make a speed bump in my lane. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, you know what I mean? If that's what they get off on, you know, the internet was made for introverts, for people who never could come outside anyways. You know, these people, awkward people, people who just never really fit in to society anyways. So when the internet came, that's their heaven. It's beautiful because they could be whoever the fuck they want because now we, the outside people, got to be in it because their shit took over. So the outside people and how we are and our moral code and the older people, we're adjusting to this shit. We're, we're still adjusting. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it is what it is, man. I am who I am. You know, I'm glad I was raised in the 70s, 80s, 90s and survived it. Like, yeah. You know. Now, when we did an interview with Adrian Broner, and he got drunk, they attacked us, right? Like we were the worst type of fucking people in the world. Oh, oh we should have stopped the interview. Why would you I, 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 for real? In, in the ring, and, and you know, yeah. out the ring, you know what I'm saying? But, but he a real nigga, man. Like you cannot, it, he, it's him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but like, but what I was saying is like, did, did, it seems like our interview got trashed when we had AB up there. I mean, look, a lot more was said though, right? With yours. But it seemed like um, there was a lot of high praise for what Nori was able to do with drink champs and having you on there, right? Did you feel any type of way? Like, like what what was the conversation? Like, yo, don't hear this part or anything? Oh, no, oh, no, no, because like when I went up, when I first of all, I went up there and just the the, the beginning of it, the, the intro was crazy, man. I'm looking to do like, yo, bro, I, you know, I appreciate that. Like, I don't take that lightly when a nigga give me mine's like I really appreciate that. It's hard. It's hard. The act of accepting it is always nervous. Yeah. <laughs> but I. But but the heart really appreciates that. And you know, once once we started, like I said, I knew I got to get loose. I got to get loose. I got to say what's on, not only on my mind but in my spirit. And that's what that's what alcohol does. It brings the spirit out. That's why they call them spirits. Pour, pour me some spirits out there. It's your birthday. Oh, look at this. I mean, I'm not gonna do it like that. I am the spirits. Let me check real quick. One second. You be getting saucy too, my nigga. Yeah, of course I do. I'll fuck around. <laughs> to see if there's something in any of them. You know, I got like fifty of them in here. They're all empty as hell. So oh, look, look. I tried. I tried everything. I think I was probably about heroin, coke, all that shit, rocks. When I was probably about nineteen. Damn, I just found. Some comos, all right. Nineteen. So talk to me about that. You're Four sitting points. there talking to these people. And now, now you gotta, you gotta understand the people. The way they reach out to me is like, I, I'm silent tears. We go shot too. I don't got that much left here though. Um, so you know, people, people be hollering at me like, you know, Dino's Danza's uncle now. So, so oh, as soon as something happens look, with you, look for yeah. us, man. So they, they, they hit me up immediately. Like, yo, what happened? uh with, with benzino i'm like what, what do you mean what happened like, you ain't see what see the uh clip that nori just put out so so they're like what's up question has there any time in life when you was with one of your niggas and he got fucked up and and and, and got emotional 
Absolutely. Fuck <laughs> me, I'm one of them that be doing it sometimes. God damn it. Okay, give me, give me one of the times where you got really emotional and shit came from your heart around your niggas. So I, I know I'm not crazy. Man, like uh, talking about just uh, being a father, right? That that fucking broke me down. Like, damn, I didn't know I had the opportunity. Like, I love y'all. Y'all y'all were able to show me a good fucking example for me and dad is like, you know, I, I love y'all. You know what I mean? Like going crazy about this shit. <laughs> look, I knew it was extra. You know what I mean? Like, look, y'all, you know what I mean? You taught me how to be a dad, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I love you. You know what I mean? So I did it. I did, we all did it. And I'm just talking about recent. But let me tell you something. We all know that Danza could drink. So I be getting fucked up. No, but look at those. See, see, people understand. I took like three triple shots and then started drinking out the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying like, to stop you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, and I and I held the interview. And I held the interview. I, was was Ash trying to stop you? Yeah, she was. was. I was A couple times. Everybody getting a little crazy, you know, in there and shit, you know, six. I had a few of the young guys around and Nori, you know, the security. So it started getting, you know what I'm saying? You know, everybody's strapped. Everybody's strapped nowadays, you know what I'm saying? So it started getting a little crazy. Ashley had to go outside and calm things down, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That was like, even Nori was like, Nori was like, he called me and said, he's like, yo, man, yo, man your girl held you, held you down, yo, for real. Like, she was outside and she was, you know, anytime I was getting a little bit too crazy, she'd be on the sideline like, I, 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 I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I at moments and I respected it. So, so, so one of the I, I, I moments would have had to be when you're talking about smoking crack. No, I mean, look it. So, first of all, when, when, look, I was about 19 years old. I was, this was like 1981. Wait, hold on. And, and Mike, 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 let me tell you, I'm going to tell you the story. I'm going to tell you the full story. Go ahead. I'll, I'll hear the full story. This was like 1981, maybe, right? 80, maybe 80, 81, 80. Mike Brown, and I don't even know if Mike Brown's still living. I think he is. But Mike Brown, Mike Brown was a Jamaican dude, but he was in America and shit. He had, the family had a big house, and there was a gang of them. And I used to fuck with Jamaicans. So me, Dow Rogers, D. McFadden, a bunch of us, a whole bunch of niggas up in Four Corners. That we, you know, we, heroin, we used to sniff heroin. Mm. We used to, oh, we was rocking, selling it, but we were sniffing it too. Mm. I never banged. You know what I'm saying? I never banged. A lot of my guys did. You know, a lot of them died from it. But when crack first came around, this was like 80, 81, he brought it, we was like, what the fuck is that? So we was like, yo, this is some shit. He was like, you can smoke it. So niggas was like, so he took a hit. I was like, word. D. Rogers took a hit. I took a hit. And it was like, oh shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, whoa, like, you know what I'm saying? Then we tried it in weed. You know, start smoking it in weed. But after a while, shit like that, those drugs, heroin, crack of those, it didn't stick with me. And I just was like a weed nigga. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have lasted this long and been this healthy if it was any different. And I don't, that's why I don't have any problems with telling my, I tried angel dust one time and mm -hmm. tore a whole fucking party, a whole house party. <laughs> I look, so what happened was, me, and, and two times, my man two times, he'll tell the story. So God rest Jimmy Tarver. Jimmy's dead. A lot of my guys are dead. He had, and Jack the Rip, Big Jack the Rip's dead. And if you're from Boston, you, you know these names. They had weed soaked in, in, in embalming fluid type shit. And so I'm giving the party. You got my 1200s and everything. So somebody said that somebody was saying something to me in the party. I took a hit of this angel dust on the back porch, the third floor. I ran down the street to my crib about a half a mile. I got my pump shotgun, put a sheet over it, and came back up the street. People to watch me. I come back in the party. I flip over my turntables and shoot, boom, a big shot in the air. And everybody runs out like I was yo know, like angel dust you know what I'm saying like I've tried I'm 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 at the age where yo, back bro. then yo bro back then everybody tried it everybody it was the first used to rap about uh angel dust huh Joe Budden used to rap about angel dust I mean you know again these are things these are the things that you in the hood and this is what's around you and you trying shit you yeah. know what I'm saying but yeah. I I was a hustler I sold I sold all that you know what I'm saying and that and, and, and my and my drug of choice ended up being weed. And I love and I still smoke weed today. And I'm not a drinker. I would drink back in the day just to drink. All kinds of shit. Private stock, old E. You know what I'm saying? Just um peach schnapps, blackberry schnapps, blackberry brandy. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't too much Hennessy and all that when when I came up. We was drinking like strong shit. 
Mad Dog. You know what I mean? But I never liked it. I just did it because niggas did it. That was a pair of pro A lot of the drugs that I did were all my niggas is doing it. We all doing it together. Yeah. We just get mischievous niggas. I ain't gonna lie, I never tried heroin. You shouldn't. You shouldn't try none of that yeah. shit. Heroin, I, heroin. I, I, I keep it 100 too, because I'm a real one, right? I, I definitely tried like pills like, um, you know, painkillers. And I definitely sniffed coke before, you know what I mean? Um, but that's as far as I went. That was Saturday. No, no, no. That was Saturday for you, not me. <laughs> <laughs> he said that was Saturday. So look, heroin. I Wait, watched, time out. Was that Saturday for you? Is that how to drink? Look, look. look I watched the whole. I watched the whole. I watched the whole culture of people get wiped out from heroin when i came up there'd be dope fiends lined up like i used to sell heroin with ybi in the 80s heavy in detroit back and forth to detroit my man pep shout out to pep shout out to his son luck shout out to ying yang the whole columbia point yeah i mean i can go on and on blood rest in peace both sides like i met in the 80s i was rocking hard with them niggas because it was a boston detroit thing Pep was the bug. Pep was from YBI, and we was rocking heavy for like years. You know what I'm saying? So it was only right that not right, but everybody had habits. I remember one time we all nodded in, in, in the basement, in Bird's basement, Jamaican Bird's basement, and it's me, Darren, Dow, a bunch of us, and we nodding like a motherfucker, just sniffing, nodding. You know what I'm saying? Because we out there selling. So we once we finished, we would go get out our packs and nod. Darren's mother came and slapped the shit out. <laughs> God, nigga, I, I said, oh, shit. Like, it, 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 like, that shit right there, I've seen niggas think they were Superman and be shot the fuck up and still live from heroin, from off of heroin. So, like, I've seen, I've seen overdoses. I've seen many overdoses, like frozen bodies, left bodies been there for a few days. Like, we was heavily selling, like, heroin before crack, before the, but, um, um, uh, they, was, was, was really what we was getting down on in Boston. Damn. My boy was out there on that H. I mean, so, uh, what, what, I, I was lucky I didn't bang. Like, because the, the next step from sniffing is banging because you can't get high sniffing no more. Your shit's all burnt out. I watched, I watched niggas. My, my, this is my, I, these are my hearts, my friends who I grew up with. When I started hanging with niggas and gang banging and everything, I had to go down some years because all my motherfuckers, damn near all of them was wiped out or in jail. Yeah, yeah. A big shot is, is from out in Boston. Uh, we had him up here. Here a couple weeks ago or about a week ago maybe two weeks ago i don't even know we got so many goddamn shows you know by the way tomorrow we got, got sukiana you know what i mean for the people that don't know we got a dope show tomorrow that, that. Yeah. <laughs> she eating ass out here well, but yo what what made you come out with this like did did is that something that you just revealed on drink champs or have you spoken about that before i mean somebody asked me i don't you know what i'm saying like it ain't you know what I'm saying? I wasn't no crackhead. I tried it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I sold a lot of it. Not proud of it because I've seen what it done. I, the crack addiction, I've seen what it done to very, very close people of mine. You know what I'm saying? And um, and and, and what it's done to to the black community, to all to all communities. But it's the black community that I'm in, and believe me, it's ravaged us. It's ravaged us. So, um, you know, there's nothing good about it. It's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I hope nobody does it. And yeah, you know, I mean, it wasn't a healthy thing to do. You know, like I said, you know, I tried many drugs. Yeah. I didn't, you know, as far as staying with them and being strung out and now nah, I was a hustler. I was out there every day and I had an image to uphold. I was a fly nigga. You know what I'm saying? So what was it? Was it just liquor then on uh, on Thursday at Dreams? Yeah. yeah, with no drugs, nothing. Just yeah. liquor, some weed. I wanna clarify. I, 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 I was Look, bro, did you see? I took fire. I, I've never seen you drink like. Oh God, I'll drink you under the table. I, I I believe it, shit. After I seen you drink, God damn, and we drink a lot. Chris and I be yo. Listen, when, when Kato and I are doing this pod, these bottles be flying. Kato, by the way, I just seen you sign in. I found some Comos. I saw him drinking. I had to I had to find something to drink. I'm like, God damn. Um, like the taste. So, if I if if liquor tastes good, maybe you know. I just, I hate the fucking this taste. Shit, it's like coffee. This shit made Britney Renner take her panties off for Charleston White. What's that? What, what's that called? Comos. Comos? What is yeah. it? Uh, it's tequila. 
<laughs> it's a Como Street birthday, man. We in the mountains. That was Jimmy. Shout out Kyle. Um, so yo, listen. So you trip out, like when I, I see, trip out. when I see, I just got emotion. Here, here goes, here goes, yeah, nah, but, but when you grab the mic and you hit one of these, because I know you, you're a respectful type of dude, oh, right? And, and I was respectful no, no. drink champ. But, but hear what I'm saying, though. Even with the equipment, you be, like, conscious of it. So when you grab the mic like that, I'm like, nah, he's feeling it right now. You know what I mean? You just give me this fucking mic. The mic fell out. Like, give me this goddamn mic. Shout out, Norbs. Um, but, like, yo, my, my boy, you, you, I felt like, at some you want to touch on some of the shit I said? I mean, you want to touch on some of the shit I said? I'm sober as fuck. Yeah, yeah, let's get it. So, but, but what I'm saying with this is, right, it seemed like you wanted to battle M, and that was it. I want to battle M. You're, you you were up here, and I'm, I I told you. I told you. I'm like, damn, I feel like you, you're going to have Eminem diss me the way we're talking right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you got me in the next oh. You never know what Marshall's thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm so we're we you're talking about it and you you say that um uh he was on Epstein Island. Now people were sitting there like you you already know what it is. I'm, he was I'm not, it was it was on the flight logs, man, with other whole bunch of other people. Like it was on he was Googling. I don't know. I don't I'm just saying he was on the flight log. I think the flight log was bullshit though, is what I'm saying. There was a the fake one and it was a thing that he was on the plane. What you mean? How's it bullshit? No. I think they made a play. Out of fake I bet you if I was on the flight logs, I bet you his motherfuckers would make a, a big thing about it. Nah, absolutely. All right. So, but it seemed come like, on. But it seemed no, like no, no more white privilege, please. Please. <laughs> I've had enough. But it seemed like for a minute at the end of the interview, nah, Norb, Norb, he wasn't on the flight log. He was really on the flight logs. He was on the flight log. Go look at it. Nah. Pull it up. This is crazy. This is crazy. All right, so look, we start off this motherfucking conversation because I don't even like to call when you and I talk. I don't like to even call them interviews. I like to, to call them fucking conversations. You know, I haven't listen. I've I've been I've been chilling and eating healthy all day, uh, working out shit. So I'm already feeling saucy off of this comos after a couple shots. But um, you, it seemed like y'all wanted to fucking or, or you were cool with like being cool with them after the drink camps. And, like it I was seems drunk, like and I was drunk. Like I don't, I was drunk, bro. Like nah, man. Like but I was drunk, and but, but what they say? They say uh, drunk words are so over thoughts, though, right? I was emotional and drunk. I've said before I want to sit down with him. I've said on MTV I wanted to end. I've said I've tried to be the peace guy. I was watching, you know, I'm watching a. I was watching a. a Yo, peace a, don't a, fucking work with the stands, bro. Like that's what I'm saying. I try to do that so, so like they could get out of my DMs and leave me the fuck alone. You know what I'm saying? It didn't work, so it's fuck him and them. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, like, I'm not built the way, I'm not, like, yeah, like, I don't back the fuck down. Like, this isn't, I didn't bring this shit back up. He made the song about me, mentioned Koi, like, you know, they think they can just keep mentioning my fucking daughter and thinking it's cool. Like, it ain't cool, but it's hip-hop, yeah. so we going back and forth. I crushed him on Votorious, crushed him on Rap Elvis. I fuck him. Like, his music's whack. The last shit he did was uh, what was the fucking, what's the name of his, begin with the R, Red Redemption, Re Recovery, whatever, the, that was the last good fucking album he did. All that other music that he done dropped, and including that fucking insulting Tupac bullshit album, niggas don't rock with that type of music. Just the music alone, take him off rapping. Just the beats alone, the, the culture don't rock with those beats, bro. The culture don't rock with that yeah. type of hip hop. I don't dispute it, but, I, I, but when it comes to you gotta understand when it comes to that battle and shit. I'm not gonna that, but, yeah, that nigga right niggas in the fucking URL and smack who chew Eminem. I don't dis I disagree. All right, so don't say battle. But but that's, 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 who is he battled? Elton John, who's he battled? Who the fuck is he battled? <laughs> who's, who's he battled? <laughs> Pretty Spears, who's he battled? Moby. Listen, I hear you. Norbs, you wanna hop on and talk to him for a second? We could talk to him. You know Norbs? No. Well, he was with Smack for a long time. Shout out to my nigga Norbs and shout out to Smack. I remember they, Smack from back in the day. Up. I remember Smack. The original I remember, team listen, I remember Smack from back in the day he when they first talked. Mariah Carey. All I'm saying is that homie, like when you say he's supposed to be this and that, like that's what he was. 
He's not that normal. We're not going to keep carrying him in such a high motherfucking praise right now. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that to the culture. Like, our culture is bigger than that. We, this guy's 53 years old. He's white, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't like that me in his time, bro. You know, his time's not no more, bro. He's not with the culture, bro. He's not listening to what we listening to. That shit that he's playing, them beats he's rapping over, ain't nobody in the culture of, that I know of in all these cities and states and these clubs everywhere. It, they're not listening to that shit. Why everybody keeps saying you were crying and they're going to just use that as a scapegoat? I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Who the fuck is anybody? I'm <laughs> <laughs> a fucking speck. I keep telling you, man. Like, who cares what the fuck anybody but says? Seems like they're trying to discredit everything you said by discredit just. Discredit my dick. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Don't throw me in the motherfucker. Who the fuck they gotta discredit me? I got a long list of accomplishments all my life in hip hop. What the fuck can anybody how, say about? How does how does Nori feel about Eminem though? Because it seemed like he was like, keep me out of it. You know what I mean? No, niggas just be like, keep, niggas know me. Yeah. If he wanted to be out of it, he shouldn't have put me on the platform. He know what the fuck that was. Nori gotta be political but what you think you think he don't know me he, you don't you don't think i was going up there to, to, to kick my yeah. shit yeah you and nori have a, a great relationship i know that a few times when you were out here you know uh me you conway's brother shots you know we went out we were smoking no that's my we, shot, we shot, with, shot. Shot. out to conway we had a, a kind of good back and forth on his um oh yeah. page yeah shout he made it a point to say, look, Eminem, I, I, I don't want to be involved with that. I fuck with you, Zeno. I, you know what I mean? I respect that. I respect loyalty. Still one of the greatest out there. And I fuck with Conway. Salute to Conway. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Word, word. Shout out to Shots. I can understand that, bro. I can understand whoever's loyal to him. You know what I mean? Now, my I thing is, I, right I never disrespected none of them. All I made a point to show how all of them are not on the label anymore. Just made it a point to be like, why is he the only one that blow up, but nobody else do, and everybody else end up leaving, and not just not just leaving, motherfuckers be complaining. Like I can pull up yeah, and show you where motherfuckers was mad with the deal and wanted to get the fuck out of there. Yeah, word. Now Joe Budden definitely complained on uh, on on. not just Joe. No, yeah, definitely not just Joe. But what what I was gonna um when. Uh, uh, damn! What the fuck was I just about to say about their label? Um, Joe left Royce, right? With Royce, you you were saying that you're ready for for a Royce battle. That's also somebody that that could spit. He could spit. I'm not saying I, anything is. But here, here's here's the thing that I here's the thing. Here's why I'm asking you. It too. You ain't rapping so long, so you're now you're dropping records, but it's been be it's been a while. So you ready for that? You got to get back in it. That's like game shape. Listen, listen, listen what, like real talk. When you listen to rap Elvis, that was two rounds right there. I could have took that off a beat, did it acapella, screamed it with passion, spit flying, and those would have been two rounds of battle rap right there. And I and I would have chewed them in there. Everybody saying that fucking Cassidy wrote this shit. I don't, I don't get... Man, listen. Like, again, this... Certain shit that I can entertain, but then there's just certain shit that's like, how, how the fuck can somebody come up to the conclusion that Kathleen <laughs> wrote something? Like, <laughs> Damn, man. This, like, uh, okay. fuck me crying. That shit is, like, crying is a human form of emotion. It's very human. Yeah. The shit that they do, and that to me, that they said, said that they know that Cassidy wrote my fucking rhyme. It's flattering as fuck, but it's it's it's, it's ignorant. <laughs> That's some ignorant ass shit. How the fuck can these people know who the fuck wrote for me? Yeah, I mean, you know what though? I feel like you be digging yourself in the grave, right? I don't, I don't dig. Let me explain it. Let me explain it before you go crazy, because you be you be going crazy before you let the explanation go out. You feel me? Uh, when you mention like, you know, a lot of people. Right, a lot of people will do exactly what you were talking about in the studio, and it does happen where people say, "Yo, you should say this here. You should say this here." The difference is is of how many people say it out loud, right? So, 
Everybody wanted to discredit you from the jump. They're like, there's no way Benzino did this. Take it, take it discredit my dick. <laughs> and my balls. That's the narrative of the day. Discredit that. You know what I'm saying? If they want to discredit, see again, like discrediting me, discrediting a nigga with the resume as long as me, as me, the resume, as long as me. How oh, does Cassidy, Cassidy, Cassidy in the building? Nobody, you can put Cassidy is here. You can put 100 of them together and, 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 and put all their resumes together. And it still won't fuck with mine. And I'm a humble nigga, but how the fuck can anybody discredit me? Like, what credentials or what, um, what type of energy do they possess or superpower to discredit the see, fucking beast? See, Cassidy is in the building right now. Cassidy, did oh, you that's write my this? motherfucking right. nigga. Cassidy, did you write this? <laughs> Yo, but look, so I feel like uh, uh, when I watched it, I saw, I'm seeing, right, not just saw, I'm seeing power. And what I mean by that is there's so many people, as, as much as there is hate, which there's always going to be hate, there's love, right? And a lot of people were, are so appreciative that you were able to go up there and do that. And, and I'll say this. Not a lot of people are able to do it. Every day I have, one thing about me is I'm gonna keep it 100 with everybody around me. So anytime I've ever been close to somebody or somebody feels like I'm the person to call when they're going through some tough times, I say, talk about it. You know what I mean? You don't gotta talk to just me about it. Talk to the people that you're going through it with and talk about it, be, be open about it. And a lot of people have a tough time doing it. That's something that you're able to do. To be able to sit there and talk about um the back and forth with m and and how it's led you to feel the back and forth with your daughter and how serious that shit is uh the back and forth with uh like, like you said smoking crack you smoke weed whatever and you're able to be open about it and um and just kind of like, like you sitting there talking about um your girl you're, you're living with your girl you know what i'm saying talking about shit like this a lot of people can't do it they're afraid and there's power in it. There, there's power that you're giving to people to say, you know what, this dude went on a platform in front of millions of people and spoke up. And everybody thinks right after that, oh shit, Benzino committed career suicide. He's never going to speak again. And then the very next, the very next day, slide, the very next day you're talking. Who, who, who is the second that we are talking about? But let's, 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 let's for a second let's avoid let's avoid what was going on with the haters for a second let's speak to the people that support you right I, yeah i i mean i'm i'm my, my thing is my thing is um i didn't even realize how much people were really into what was going on as far as what happened um my dms are i mean it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dms like yo like i appreciate you and yo it was you know what i mean it's some great it's some it's some good shit you know what i'm saying i didn't realize it it was touching people like that or hitting people like that i just be me people have seen me be vulnerable before on tv and drink and you know what i'm saying people have seen me before my tv crying before like you know so i got a lot inside and sometimes you know what i'm saying the water come out you know like i i think it's healthy for the, for that to, to do that because then you won't you won't it won't come out in other ways. That's the most important thing, man. I know I got a lot of built up in me because as I'm, as I go through life, I have to kind of suppress it. And the way I deal with it in my traumas is just don't even think about it. But eventually sometimes that shit comes up. Nobody's, nobody's a superhero. You know, we try to be, especially niggas. Niggas all, you know, all like my sons won't cry. My sons never, I see Zeno holding back. The, he, even though he wants to cry at times, he, he'll hold him back. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how I am towards him. I'm hard on him. Um, you feel responsible for the reason he can't shed tears? Yeah. Hell yeah. Because I'm that. Urgh. And he wants, to, he wants to show that. He sees his dad. You know what I'm saying? But he sees the love inside of me, too. And he sees the smile on my face, too. Life isn't always err for me like people think. People think that I just go through life like, yeah. hell, Like, hell no. When I hang 
take her from here. I'm going to get in the jacuzzi. I'm going to like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Like, people got to, people got to put, people got to like, sometimes just really put shit in perspective and, and get out the internet perspective for a second and get in life perspective. The Eminem thing that me and him are going through, the most important thing is we don't, we, we, we've never even met in person. We've never even met. What type of shit is that? We don't even know each other like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, I guess it's good for entertainment. The shit that I'm standing for is way deeper. I don't know what he's standing for and what he's playing with. But my platform about the Eminem situation has always been deep as far as hip hop. I've explained it too many times on your show. And, you know, that'll never change. You know, he should have never mentioned me. You know what I mean? And listen, I broke down on Norris. And uh, like I said, I went there with the intentions to drink, to get drunk and see and, 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 and let it all out. So no regrets, not at all. Regret for what? What did I say wrong? What did I do wrong? I do Just because you went. A human moment. I had a human moment that, hey, made, yes, you, that, you that, made, that, that maybe people aren't used to see. Maybe people just just used to certain things. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Like I went through hell, death and destruction, and survived it. Like I went through all the murder shit and everything else, and I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? So the trials, the tribulation, the indictments, the wars, like all that. A lot of my niggas didn't make it, and I, I'm I rep for them. I'm a living, breathing, walking specimen of. Roxbury, Mattapan, Dorchester, Four Corners, Boston, Massachusetts. Like it was fucked up when it was how I grew up. <laughs> what was the what was the like conversation with you and Nori after? I, I passed out no. and, and Ashley Yeah, I know I, I, I'm talking about hey, Orlando. And we checked in the hotel because I had a uh, I had a walkthrough in Augusta the next day. So I, I had a you know what I'm saying? I'm definitely talking about the day after. Um I think it was the day after the day after. Um, he's like, yo, bro. He was like, he said, this is going to be great. He was like, listen, he said, you know, that the, the last part of it, I didn't remember too much of the last part of it. It was kind of like, I don't remember too much. Because I was, the last, you know, it was it was creeping up on me towards the end. All the liquor I drunk. And um, it was like, he said, yeah, you got, you know, he said, it's going to be good. He told me, he said, it's going to be good, man. He was like. You all right? He just kept saying, "You all right? You gonna be all right?" You know what I'm saying? Because I guess he assumed I was thinking, but I was all right. I was, I was good. I just did my walk through. I made it back to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? I think we was binge watching Griselda. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, Yo, you know what? I saw a clip um, where he was asking you about how Elliot Wilson was talking about uh, journalists. Yo, but, but, but here it is, part though. You know where that came from? Well, what came from? That Elliot Wilson clip. Uh-uh. Right here. Oh, for real? I was like, but damn, Bezino can't tell him. I didn't that, know. How about that? That shit happened right here. I didn't know that. When I had Elliot Wilson up here, he was talking about how we used to be seen as, like, you know, nerds. Now they're now it's like they're accepted. It's actually <laughs> really dope. Accepted. Except they accepted by other nerds. <laughs> See that that's where he, he has this in him. People like him, they're, they're fucking delusional. Like, no, you're not accepted. We're not accepting you. You you it's oh, cool. We can Elliot we can coexist. Like, cool, we can coexist. But all that accepting you shit, that's all you wanted, and it's not gonna happen. Accept you for what? Yeah. I think Elliot Wills is a cool dude. I spent some time with him. We hit the club. He seen. You know what I mean? I don't know what your beef is with Elliot. I ain't know that. I, it, there is no beef. Older than this old in the past. I'm saying, you know what I mean? Like, like I don't got no beef with Elliot Wilson. You know what I mean? And if he's a cool dude to you, this shit, I respect it. I don't you know I mean? I ain't seen Elliot in a long time. I just know the last time I seen him, I was trying to poke a hole in, the, in his head. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was trying to my finger and touch his brain. <laughs> Damn. But nah, the, um... So like now with everything that happened, you end the interview off like that. Um, people are thinking there's got to be some sort of. So so there's a guy named Stevie Knight. Shout out Stevie Knight. He had um, he does what like academic does. You know he blogs and he's sitting there and he's saying that you tried to use the the, the black versus whites 
as a way to keep this is coming from a black dude. <laughs> I come from Boston, Massachusetts, bro. Stevie Knight would have got his fucking head smashed back in the 80s and then with all that fucking white man bowing down shit. He wouldn't have lasted in my hood with that. You've seen it. You've seen it. Stevie Knight wouldn't have lasted an hour in my hood with that bow down to white man shit. Nobody give a fuck about what Stevie Knight got to say. Stevie Knight crossed over. He all the way crossed over. <laughs> yeah, Stevie Knight's with them. He's, he's cool. It's cool. There's nothing. We can all coexist. You know what I'm saying? Like, who the fuck is like, this guy sits in his bedroom with his pants on and he, and he worships Eminem. So he can get all of Eminem's followers. Everybody knows it's an easy way to get millions of followers if you blow Eminem's balls. And that's what these YouTube fucking weirdos are. They sit in their rooms and they blow Eminem's balls so they can get millions of fans because they know that, uh, that he got millions of fucking fans. Who the fuck? Now you talk about the, how boy. He, like, again, resume. When you go, the only thing I remember you by your resume. Do you really think? Somebody's gonna be shouting fuck when when we all gone. Somebody's gonna be shouting Stevie Knight. <laughs> now I know Bobby Knight, the great Bobby Knight, the great Indiana coach. Nobody's gonna know who the fuck Stevie Knight is, yo. That YouTube shit, I that's them. Let them get off. They they jerk they dick off and do you and talk about people, other people, and you know. But I know the Eminem thing. All those guys that got Eminem, it's the easy way to get. So he has to kiss up to them. Boot licking ass. <laughs> ass. Tap dancing ass. <laughs> Niggas been doing it for years, bro. I actually just got familiar with it. They're just about to get just familiar with you, feel me? Um, but like I feel like uh when you spoke on Koi and you said that she feels like she has to be cool to not to be blackballed. I'm smoking the blunt when I'm listening to it, right? Um I felt like about right I, f I feel like you're right right like he's got he's got power in the industry but have have you and coy ever had this conversation no we ain't never had we ain't had no uh -uh. no the bottom line is this you know what i'm saying you know that's the pressure that the industry puts on to make it seem like he's some you know what i'm saying like he doesn't have no bearing on coy's career coy's fans have nothing to do with him absolutely nothing they are a different fan. Yo, by the no way, people are blacklisting Koi or doing anything. He can't, we, we're not worried about that. Yeah. Yo, by the way, real quick, for the people that are talking about views, the views don't matter on this. There's there's one thing for sure. I'm shadow banned from IG for saying the F word too much, and I'm not talking about yeah, well, it's fuck. just it's going up on YouTube. So we <laughs> it's Easter. We're, we're on his girl's page right now because he's completely banned from um, speaking about anything. Thing. So I stand up for straight men um, very often. I talk my shit. So, uh, you know, these social media platforms don't fuck. YouTube fucks with me. But I, I was talking to uh, the Zister and I was like, yo, we got to talk about. Uh, I went on over there at Drink Champs. So I just hollered him and there's always love. Um, again, a lot of y'all don't know that. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't do podcasts just to podcast and have a fucking bullshit conversation. I'll be having and building relationships with people that last forever. So don't 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 look at the uh the number of fucking people watching this IG live. Wait till I throw this shit up on, on YouTube and you see hundreds of thousands on it. Mm -hmm. And then we can talk about how many people are looking at it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, overall, what do you feel like walking into the next day? Because you're viral everywhere, right? Like the shit's viral. Um and a lot of people are like like, oh, well, why is he hanged up, uh, hung up on uh, being viral and all that shit? It doesn't fucking matter. Hung up on being viral. Was, I stay viral. <laughs> viral is a regular thing. Like, it's not nothing new to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't go crazy when I'm viral. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't. It's, everybody, let me tell you, viral is the new thing, though. My phone be ringing off the hook when I'm viral, though. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to be viral. Look, we are, but I think most importantly, world, baby, stay viral. I'm, I got t-shirts coming out, sweatsuits, stay viral. The stay viral department. But I think most importantly, the, 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 the biggest thing of what, the walk away out of everything is the fact that you were able to 
reach through to certain men that don't have a voice or are afraid to voice what they're right a lot right. of people, a lot of people would have sat there because because nori doesn't stream live right so you you definitely have enough of a relationship built up with nori to have sat there and said yo i don't want you to air that right and he would he would have respected right. If right you said that to him so because you went through a lot, bro. And I think sometimes even you don't even understand that shit. You know what I mean? Sometimes just you're just trucking through so goddamn much that you don't even sit back and pay attention to the pain that that you're dealing with because you know that, hey, I, I don't got a choice. I got to move to the next day. Right. You were built. That's how you were grown through, throughout your entire life. No matter how many obstacles came your way, you right. said, you know, I'm going to go again tomorrow. You know, you 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 sit there and you voice, you know, that you you want to have a relationship with your daughter. She goes on on the internet talking crazy about you with uh, Angie Martinez, I believe, right? But still, you're able to maintain. You know what I mean? I can't imagine what it would feel like right now if uh, my daughter or, or my son ever had anything bad to say about me. I know I lose my fucking mind. I lose my mind if my sibling said anything like that about me on air. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not, so not you're, somehow you it seems like you're able to just keep fucking finding a way to navigate and walk through but i don't know if that's so good sometimes well it takes a toll on your mental health um i started realizing mental you know again we take mental health for granted i never looked at his mental health i just look it up that's how we grew up and i just started um you know, re just recently the last few years i did a, i did an interview a couple years ago with this mental health type of program and it was a great interview and i started realizing i started looking at myself and certain signs of mental health issues i see the signs the with the, the the mental health discipline that i lack and um in areas that i could do a lot better i could be stronger mentally health wise so you know triggers traumas traumas triggers um and the way you deal with things the way you, everything you do is all up here every every thought every move you make everything it all starts here so you know you just try to i looked at all all these years i've lived and the different traumas and the different situations i've been through and how i came out of them and i'm always it's a thinking man's game it's more of a thinking man's than a physical than a physical game and um you know as long as you're thinking you're keeping your mind sharp as long as you're and then common sense, you know, it doesn't take eight years of college to get common sense. Common sense is free. It's God given. It's just you got to pay attention of what you're doing and experiences. I always, you know, I always managed to always, like you said, forget about whatever happened that was crazy. Today's a new day. You got a new start to start. Not knowing that that whatever happened is still stored in me, you know, and, um, it, it, it takes a strain on your mental health and how you deal with other things, love, relationships, relationships with your kids, relationships with your girl. I mean, these things suffer and you go through the pain of them in real time. You know, um, I could tell you at 58, I'm, I'm still learning a lot in a lot of areas. I've learned a lot and, and, I, and, and I have knowledge in quite many things, but there's still a lot of that I don't. That, that I'm, I'm, um, I mean, you know, there's still a lot that I don't. And I, I know I have to be as much of a chief uh, Indian, as much of a talker or listener. I know I have to have, keep building patience. That's the most important thing. Keep instilling discipline. I mean, these are all things that you have to train your mind to do as you get older. Sometimes you get older, you just let, just say, fuck it. You let your mind, your spirit, your health, your physical, you just let everything just go away. You say, fuck it. And I'm not, I just ain't, I'm not built like that. There's too many niggas I done seen fall. There's too much shit I done been through. And, you know, I'm just, I don't have any, I don't have any desire to tire now. You know, to sit back or to go slow or to relax or take a back seat or get on a fucking rocking chair. Like, nah, hell no. You know, I still, I still. Think you're in a battle at all with depression and you don't know it probably i smoke a lot of weed 
I mean, a lot of weed. Weed is, is definitely helps me cope. I smoke a lot of weed. And good weed, strong weed. And now I have to I have to emphasize that because it's certain weed that's gonna help you. Bullshit weed won't help. Mid's not gonna help. It'll make things worse. I gotta have strong, good weed, expensive weed. The more strong, the more THC, the more expensive the shit is. Yeah. That's my that's my medicine is weed. I don't I don't take no pills or none of that. I don't, I take I know people that do. I know they have to take them all the time, antidepressant. When I was locked up, I used to see lines of niggas taking this shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's hard out here. But weed is my antidepressant. Have you ever been to any type of therapy at all? On TV. You know what I'm saying? And that was therapy shit. That was real therapy, going through that shit, sitting in the house with people you don't know. And go, that was crazy. That'll drive you crazy. I did that a couple of times. Broke down a couple of times. I know I have mental health issues because when I get in situations of love, of care, of, you know what I mean? I break down, you know, I break down. You know what I mean, I didn't deal with that when I was young. I stayed in the street, stayed in the hood. Anytime that looked like love or care was coming up, I automatically shut it down and got right back to the to the streets. And, and, and I'd rather deal with danger and the street shit than deal with this love shit because it, it threw me off. And by the time when I started falling in love, I knew nothing about it. And then, you know, you get take advantage of and, you know, things, shit, chaos happens, you know, yeah. you know, but I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. I'm, I'm to the point where I think I've crossed the threshold of real understanding and enlightenment of what life relationships is about. I still got some shit areas I have to refine, but for the most part, you know, God's enabled me to live this long and within living this long and me not stopping and me still going as hard as I'm going, like I'm learning, I'm learning. I'm still learning as I go. You never stop learning. Now I'll keep it a hundred with you. I'm somebody that, when I fuck with somebody, I genuinely fuck with somebody, right? So I watched the interview and when I saw a point where I felt like you were starting to like get too into the emotion, this hit bothered I'm like, damn, he's going through it. And they're airing it and I didn't watch the rest. So at that point, I saw clips. Right. It was a hard watch. You know, even, look, I used to do Love and Hip Hop. Hey, happy birthday, Ash. She downstairs with a friend. I, I used to do Love and Hip Hop, and I, I couldn't watch it. When I got shot at my mom's funeral, they aired that. I, I haven't watched that episode yet. The episode where my mom's died. I didn't watch, like, there were episodes I still haven't seen in Love and Hip Hop. I just won't see him. So, I mean, you know, people deal with their traumas in different ways. If, if there's anything, I feel like I've experienced a lot where I can stand in front of people and, and, I've, and, and, and I've talked with, 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 with young guys, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm able to get through to them and that's the main thing. That's the first thing is just to get through to them. So um, I feel good about who I am and what I am. and. Um, mental health wise, I'm gonna, you know, I want to kind of make it a point to, to kind of maybe try to get in at those areas, to try to help out, do a little more help. Because one thing I, I do recognize is the outpour and the outcry of people seeing me like this and it relating to them. I don't know if it froze for all of us or for just him. But I'm gonna wait here for a second and see what happens. Y'all can still hear me? Let me see. Oof, that shit was deep. Not gonna lie. I, I know that a lot of people, their general opinion is to just sit here and trash them um, because it'll go viral. Um, but you know that shit is that shit is serious, and people don't people don't like to factor that in when you watch um, when you watch social media uh, interviews when you watch celebrities speak. The cool all the shit for people to do is be able to down talk them and fucking discredit everything they do. 
but you know sometimes this shit is real so you know a, a lot of what you heard uh today is some situations you know i wanted to talk to him about what he went through but, but that mental health shit is real you know and i feel like you know so people sit here and just talk shit all day when you're probably going through the same shit you know i i, I noticed that a lot about people a lot a lot of y'all go through a lot of shit and you'll watch somebody go through it and laugh at them. But in reality, you're going through the same motherfucking thing. But you can sit there and you can laugh at them. And it, it almost like makes you feel better about what you're going through, but it doesn't. You know what I mean? And I feel like as, as humans, because of what goes on here at social media, we don't have compassion. Because we're almost like more programmed to want to have the first dope comment you know what i mean the most like comment and shit like that so it's just a sad world but um you know it's 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 something that you got to think about when, when you watch these interviews and i think about it a lot when we have interviews with people and we have people sitting up here in these chairs you know we're talking to them and you can see they're going through something but it's almost like you know ah fuck it right like I'm telling you that this 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 is um something that we need to be better at, you know what I mean for sure, because people just for whatever reason ain't good at that shit. But um, shout out Norbs, Norbs. I'm gonna, let's see. I don't know what the fuck you got going on. You're laying laying in bed right now, you know what I mean, but. Find me, goddamn it! Nah, but listen, I appreciate everybody for tuning in. I'm about to upload this shit on YouTube. Uh, again, remember tomorrow night or tonight we got um, we got Sukiana the Goat live on the Dance a Project Thursday night. We got the interview. Oh well, well we got him Thursday night. We got the interview of the year. Um, which I'm going to be competing with Drink Change for the Benzino joint. Yo. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Ash, happy birthday. Thank you. It's my birthday. 25. 25. <laughs> no. Thank you. Just get to say baby. <laughs> baby, baby. <laughs> yeah, man, I just came out here to reset. Chill out for a minute, relax, you know? Yeah. Nasty, you're on a little vacation right now. Yeah. Came out here for a few days, man. Crazy, man. Yeah, nah, it's gonna, we got some fun out here. It's dope, man. It's, it's nice out here. It's peaceful, too. We way up on the mountain, like way high. I can't wait to see. We got here while it was still dark, so I, I really want to see what the view's like tomorrow. Big ass hot tub downstairs. It's dope. Georgia? Yeah, Blue, Blue Ridge Mountains in wow. Georgia, yo. Yeah. That sounds like some Ozark shit. Nah, it's dope, bro. They got so many cabins and shit, man. You know, it's, it's called Blue Ridge. Yeah. A lot of people, We this is where we filmed the infamous, when we was in a jacuzzi with Kirk and Love and Hip Hop, we came up here. Remember when I was in a jacuzzi? Which, oh, with, with who? With Kirk Frost, Rashida's husband. Oh, no, I don't, I don't know. Well, anyways, there was a part in Love and Hip Hop where me, Bambi, and all of us was in a jacuzzi. We came to Blue Ridge Mountains. Bobby V came up. It was, it was dope. It was, it was dope. Bobby V, like Bobby Valentino? Yeah, he brought a bunch of bitches up and shit. Right. So. Right, you, you need to stop talking about bitches. Your girl's birthday. You need to be like, what you mean, man? My girl is my girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm seeing like, talk about, listen, I can't talk about shit. I got fucking holes in my door when I talk about shit. My girl be tripping out. You know what nah, I'm saying? Nah, I mean, I'm faithful. I'm, I'm faithful. I don't cheat. I'm you faithful. Know, you know what I'm saying? Whatever we do, whatever we do, we, we have to do as a team. Teamwork, teamwork. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork does you know make the dream work. But now nah, I see you teamwork talking make about dream you work. Took 14 of them joints down in Miami. I'm like, this dude, this is sheesh. No, man, man, you know, man, we was all telling crazy stories, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We all, yeah. we all, 
Oh God, crazy story. We just telling crazy story. I didn't even know that shit was gonna make the internet. We was talking about way doper shit, and they put that dumb shit on. But yo, but to, I, I want you to spend time with your girl, right? Because it's her birthday. But before you, partner. before you, my partner, yeah, baby. That's what's up. But before you stayed up, I didn't want to ask you again. Um, you ever plan to speak to? Because as I watch what you go through and how you're still able to somehow find a way to put a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. You ever think to talk to people about, um, you know, helping them battle their issues? Man, I want to, and I, and and I think, I think, I think everything that I've went through has kind of, you know, um, prepared me to do so. You know what I'm saying? Like I really think I could. I've I've been through a lot of uh, things, and I know more more so now. I know how to speak now. I'm not, you know, public speaking. You know what I'm saying? Um. I'm starting to really kind of like enjoy doing that, you know, you know, so uh, when it comes to mental health, I think we all go through it. And I just think hearing it from my point of view, because everybody can communicate things differently, but just hear, hearing how I communicate it, I think people would be surprised. And, you know, when it comes to mental health, I mean, you just help one person. That's, that's, that's major because mental health torments people, you know, every day, all day. And it's it's something out of people's control, but you know I believe I, I I know a lot of coping mechanisms naturally, not necessarily stuff that I've learned from therapy. Some too, but just pretty much because I know I'm looking at them. They live in the way I'm living. I'm living how I'm living. I'm li I'm looking at us as so relatable that you know let try this. You know what I'm saying? Because you know this work for me and we're not too far apart from how we live and who we are and what we are do you you know a lot of people i i know a lot of people who have lost their lives to depression and mm -hmm. you know a lot of the times i ain't know right. you know what i mean right. it's right. almost like they seem happier than everybody else you could see something because i'm an observative person right right you right. Don't know, right you know if it's like you know, the person could just be going through a hard time in their relationship or financial reasons. You know, there was somebody out, there was a woman out in Miami who just tried to kill herself the other day. And uh, she jumped off a bridge, but I, she survived. But she, she left two twin babies in the car oh, and they, they both died. Um, and she said that she actually planned to kill them. That's tough. Yeah, so they both died, and, and the mother's now locked up, and she's being charged with murder. But not even with murder. I think she's being charged with something else. But um, it's crazy to think about because, you know, you see some people in the comments talking about, um, you know, people don't know what women go through postpartum and when there's no help because the lady said she wanted to kill them for reasons. Um, have you ever had a moment in your life where you felt like this is the end? Um, you know, I've had some pretty dark moments, um, but I, it, like with me, it was more so, I, it was more so of at, at that moment at, that it was dark that I had to really, that's when I have to really go into survival mode. You know what I'm saying? That's when, to me, is when I, is when my survival tactics kick in the most. So I don't have time to be victim or, or have time. I felt pretty i've been in some dark moments of course i think we all go through it but i just don't have time to be you know like at, at that moment i gotta figure I'm, I'm good at crisis management at thinking quick yeah like quick like you know getting out of things make you know what i'm saying crazy shit mr wolf on you know on that remember, remember you remember the movie mr wolf uh no. fiction and shit the one that you know anyways like i just i'm just real quick with it and um I don't have time, you know what I'm saying, to like go to that next level of thinking of like, damn, I want to kill myself. Nah, I'm, whatever I, I'm feeling dark about, I'm thinking of a way to get up out of that shit. And there's way more many, way more many ways to get up out of it than suicide. Suicide's one way. That's one thought. But there's way many more many ways to get out of that thought and that situation if you just put your mind to it. Breathe, breathe, calm. You know, breathing's head, you know, calming yourself is the first thing in any situation. It, it's your, you know, is your tense. You know, you just gotta breathe and just loosen up. And then, you know what I'm saying, try to think straight. A lot of times it's good to walk outside and just look up in the air and so that your mind expands. 
and you're not nothing's in front of you that's close whether it's a phone or a wall or just go outside and just look in the air and let your mind expand you know don't be so close-minded um you know i just there's a lot of ways to because it's all about thoughts suicidal thoughts are just thoughts the idea is to get the thoughts out of your head that's the idea is to is to get that thought that thought that is tormenting you at that moment we got to find a way to wipe that thought and there's many ways to wipe that thought out and you just have to just you know you have to commit commit to you know to to finding yourself to where it comes it becomes a habit where you're thinking about it like yes i don't want to be thinking of that thought i want to put this thought in my head you're conscious of it fire is this is this a conversation have you ever had to have a conversation like this with your children yeah you know the, the, the you know the, when they do let me talk to them you know what i'm saying i i get pretty i get pretty uh um i get pretty you know like i i try to break it everything down so there's a clear understanding and break it down to where is that they understand it and don't make it too complicated but making sure that i'm breaking things down so there's no excuse you know detail sometimes it's the detail and things that really could you know throw throw something off bad or, or be the difference so certain things in life i try to break them down so they can understand how i think you know when kids are just so into the internet that like they're not really listening to what we got to say anymore but being in the, the internet out to your after they see what you go to you know they stay have they have you had a conversation with any of your kids about no nah, no nah, nah. you know ray ray and taj my boys you know look that's dad they they've been around me their whole lives i've been they've they've seen some wild shit me go through you know what i'm saying like this isn't nothing new with them like they were prepared for this and they're strong they're mentally strong boys as coy is mentally a um, strong woman and they're mentally strong young men she's do mentally you, strong. Do, you, do you like expect a yearn for coy? huh do you expect or even yearn for a call from coy um of course you of course i i i you know yearn i mean of course i, I want to call of course all the time you know that's natural you know what I'm saying? Um, there's nothing like when your kids call and check on you. That's 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 a dope feeling. So you know, I'm always welcoming that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> huh? When's the last time you spoke to Court? Oh, it's been a minute. It's been a, around that. Uh, uh, it's been it's been it's been a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I can see that bothers you, though. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's gonna bother any any dad, yeah. but you you learn to deal with it. Yeah. You learn to smile through it. You learn to deal with it. That's what you got to deal with. It. You cannot, you know, you gotta know that it's gonna be all right tomorrow. It's gonna be all right next month. It's gonna be all right. You know, that time will come. And then, you know, this way, because you know, you can't again. You can't go into that depression of oh my god, she, no, 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 no. She's she's happy. She's doing well. She's financially doing well. What's better than that? Yeah. There's not too much to worry about. She's very smart, very able. And you know what I'm saying? And you know, she got people around her. And you know, you know what I'm saying? She believes in God. God got her. And it, if it came down to it, she knows I'm only a phone call away. Yeah. Now, I always respected your opinion. You know that because we had a lot of conversations. I got a dog. All right. And I'd be thinking about, I'm not going to be perfect. No matter what I try to do, I'm not going to be perfect. And the day that's the most terrifying is, is you know, because I get to hold them in my arms right now. She's only a month old. My son is um, about to be two years old. And, like, like my son, for instance, today woke up crying. And I'm like, damn, like, how do I fix it? I, I, I don't see him go through emotions. He's usually just happy and shit. And it wasn't like a regular wake up and cry. Like, you, I, I felt like he was hurt. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Man. Listen, man, you, you got the best of both worlds right now and when they're young that's that's when you're gonna enjoy them the most like you're good you got a long time to enjoy them it's only until after that it's until after that you know what i'm saying is when they get older and they they leave the nest and things change but you got you, you, you have a long time to even think about that you're just enjoy them the way they are because these are the greatest years to, that you're gonna have for your kids not that when they get older isn't great but you know, you, you're, 
they depend on you. Yeah. And that feeling is what makes you a father. So what I say, what I, say, <laughs> what I mean, like, like, what would I say? What would you say? Like, you get a, you get a phone with boy right now. Everybody. I feel like you would even, you would probably feel more at a loss for words than anything else, right? No, nah, hell no. I'd get right into it. I don't, again, I don't want to. She don't want to dive into the emotional shit either. We just going to be, hey, I love you. How you doing? Pop, 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 pop. You know what I'm saying? We talk. You know what I'm saying? There's no time so, for the emotions. We can't. If you had, like, you know, if you had it. Because, because said, that, that's a sensitive, that's a sensitive spot. You know what I'm saying? That'll, that'll, that'll happen whenever that yeah. happens. There'll be a time and place for that to happen. But when we, if, if I, if, if she just called, I wouldn't, you know. I'm trying to keep it. Hey, how you doing? Yo, man, you know what I'm saying? You looked at amazing at the Grammys, and you know? You know what I'm saying? You can't, sometimes being emotional throws things off. You just got to just let things flow. What would what would you, like, if you had some, I know you got some words for uh, before we leave. First thing, I'm telling I love it, how, how proud of her and how great she's doing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> of course, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, the regular stuff, and, you know, and I mean, just let her do a lot of the talking. Yeah. You know, see what she got to say. Hear that's, her out. That's, that's the gem right there. Listen to her. Yeah. Just, yeah, fall back and shit. <laughs> DJ, <laughs> I got to let strategy. you back. You know, you have strategy, you know. I got to let you get back to the wifey. Go ahead. No, Take no, care no, bro, man. Come on, man. Listen, man. I'll see you soon, man. I'll be in. in... Oh, yeah. Um, Thinking about another celebrity boxer match with Eminem's brother. Oh, let's get it. I ain't even know he's brother. I, I talked to Damon, man. So I talked to, I'm going to talk to him on Friday. We're doing a Zoom call, but I think they're trying to set that up with his brother, Nathan, between me and you <laughs> and whoever's going to hear this on YouTube. Yeah. Yo, talk to Nori. Tell Nori I want him up here, too. Right, but hold, hold on. No, I, I can set that up, but hold on. Yeah. How do you feel about me and Eminem? How do, you, how do you feel that'll do? I think that'll be fire. You think I, that'll be good on Celebrity Boxing? You got a brother, though. Yeah, Nathan. I ain't, I ain't shit. I don't know. You're not a stand? <laughs> I listen to him in the car every day. <laughs> 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 uh, I ain't know. But hey. <laughs> Are you trolling me? No, I'm just, he has just a having some fun. I'm just having some fun, my brother. About yeah. to go roll me up, man. You no, know, it's fucked up. You no, know, it's fucked up. I got no. I can't even roll up. I got no more blunts, and I got no more sheets. And like we're on this mountain with a little thin road that takes them there half an hour to get to the next fucking. Okay, I'm just gonna just say fuck it. Just wait till the morning. I'm tired. Yeah, you're out in the woods. Go spend we're time. The, the birthday, you feel me? Enjoy that. Appreciate it. You heard? Adam, I'll holler at you. I'll I love you, brother. Love, peace.